Hi guys, Arctic here. So for this video, we'll be the tier list for PvP content for 3.4.9 patch. As the previous one is for PvE, so for today, we're gonna have is the PvP one. So uh, today, as usual, I'm not gonna be alone for this tier list. I invited one dislike player as well, which is Chony. So Chony, can you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, I'm Chony. Uh, I'm in Death Angels Club and you probably see me in like the Discord sometimes in the main court as well yeah yeah so um, for today's tier list so we will base on some few um, condition to rate on the uh, specific tier so um, this tier list here will be only considering the resonance zero to maximum up to two so this tier list will be more um, friendly or easier for those lower result player if you are wondering the r6 result one that will be another video then the highest priority for the pvp one will be knockout then the second one will be beat bout then triple threats which is the gbg then rta and point war because rta doesn't come that often and then point war is the lowest uh, pvp reward among all of them so we'll base on this criteria criteria and then if if the expert can be fulfilled in all the content in pvp then they will rate in meta or else they'll rate on strong maybe you can fulfill like three of them or maybe specifically very strong in one set of combo then decent and niche so niche here is kind of like so let's say owners at the example so owners is very strong in gvg but other than gvg that, will, that won't be that strong then it will be in niche so the niche here is only specific in one content that's very strong but other than that it's not really good then back here is just doing not that good in most of the pvp content we have on the list all right so for today this tier list here with the first as we're gonna go through it's gonna be leora so um leora have amazing aoe damage have like stand off attack up buff for herself in early game when i started the game not long or maybe mid game when i get leora i do use her in pvp content but when you reach until like specific tier you don't really use Leora that often anymore and especially to the current meta like everyone have Anna, Leora isn't that used that often now. So in my opinion for Leora maximum up to R2, I would say Leora is around niche to decent. Just, I would say niche to decent is because Leora might be still using for lower tier but the moment you, you go until uh, the later into the game, uh, you will notice that Leora isn't that strong anymore in um pvp content but how do you think about it johnny yeah um i agree he's she's basically like the quintessential basic dps and uh she works well until you start reaching stuff like jj anna yeah Wu. once you start seeing them she kind of like falls off a little bit you know what i mean yeah so um i'd, I'd put her in niche that's that's not a bad uh, do, do you think yeah player will still use Leora like in RTA situation depends on the enemy um if they save her S3 for certain things they could one shot stuff like JJ because she uh strips all their buffs and stuff you know what I mean but like that's a bit too niche <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay yeah true you get you get you get counted by too much to mm. uh, really work nowadays Okay, the next one is Mavis. So for me, uh, even though we have a Mavis counter in a way now, which is Petros, but even though there's a counter in the game, I don't think that Mavis is out of the meta. I do still think that Mavis skills in knockout, beat down, triple threats, um, maybe not in RTA, but I do believe people will still use her in RTA and also in point war. So I would say Mavis is still remain in the meta tier for PvP. Yeah. Um, especially because you said care be bad at the top two. Uh, yeah. You're still using Mavis in care, especially since you need five teams. Yeah. Uh, be bad. You might be in your second team with Iki. Mm. I don't think you see that many people with Petrus. True. Of course. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Petrus is not like until <laughs> dominating the. It's whole... not overwhelming. Yeah. 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 Like it's not like Wuyu situation. Mm. Everyone is trying to get her right mm, yeah. yeah i agree so i think we can still put her in meta <laughs> then still put her in meta feng shun r2 i would say um it's still very it's very useful in terms of buffer ap pusher which is very important in pvp ap pusher and also as a sub dps and not to mention the multi he can hit anna so i think it's still it's very good in knockout be about triple tries also as a unit as well i 
I think RTA she he have his own position as well as no point wall. So I think it's meta. How do yeah, you think? Yeah. I agree. His um his speed his speed tier is quite high. It's something like what top five, top six or something. You mean the uh, so he's still used quite a lot. Yeah, in rival rooms his speed tier, yeah. So uh, he's still used quite a bit. It could just be your AP pusher for um uh, for your team. I personally use him in my anti Wuyu team that doesn't use Wuyu, ah. so it's it's pretty good. Okay, because uh, uh, mm. he gives attack up, speed up, crit damage up, and everything. So yeah, just too many he's, things he's doing. All around, he's very good. <laughs> he's too good. It's Hilda. So Hilda is very strong in PVE, but PVP situation if you're not like R six, and then if you don't really like in like, like let's say the rival rune in knockout and beat bow, and let's say. Um, usually, you get dispel or you don't even have the chance to cast S3. I would say Hilda here is around decent to strong between that because I do still think that the sleep, if you manage to cast the S3, is still going to be very annoying. But considering R0 to R2, I don't think Hilda will have that much of impact. I agree. Because uh, without having the her buff right at the start of the battle, you can't really do much because... A lot of the time you're attacking into like people that might be way fast and that sleep can come in very clutch. Then do you think Even if it's just to disable Do you think the Hilda have to rate in decent or strong? Uh I put her in decent because she's a bit too slow to play the controlling role in rival runes where most of the actual rewards are. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, uh Suje. So I think Suje we can Straight away agree is on meta. He's she's she's, <laughs> she's being used everywhere, any situation. Yeah, I agree. Um, her true damage, um, at R two she's saving her allies. Yeah, it's it's quite a quite a lot in one Esper, similar to a function where he just does so much. Where, so you can't really ignore the the power. So yeah, I'd say meta works. Okay, then the next one is Sakura. Sakura, I would say even R0 is already very strong, especially she's a defender and she's one of the core unit for a Wii U team. And her heals, her buff, uh, uh, other buff that can cut in block the control effect, I would say Sakura is at meta. Yeah, uh, I personally use Sakura at R0. Oh, it's just R0? So rude, she gives. I thought, I thought yours is like R6. Up, uh, healing. <laughs> nah, mine's still only R0. Oh my god, okay. okay. <laughs> Alright, now yeah, next one. Amir. Okay, Amir here, even though we are just considering until R2, I think that Amir without like R4 and R6, Amir is still going to be very strong. He will be even stronger when he face like Jin Xiu or like Jiang Zhu Li, all those experts that can generate shield consistently. Amir will make it even stronger. I, I also see some player use Amir like R zero R two is already dealing a massive amount of damage. So I would rate Amir like strong to meta. I why am I like considering strong between meta? It's like the rival rune is frost set, so um, it kind of limit Amir's performance in a way when you're in lower reso for knockout and big big bout. But I do feel like he can, he excel in most of all the PP content. Yeah, um, especially in stuff like big bout where you can choose your opponent. Uh, even KO match where you can choose your opponent. His niche is very general, especially with Jinchu being so popular uh, and strong. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I can say you can put him in strong for R2. Mm, but but if, once you get if him like, R4 you think... and R, it was go straight to meta, yeah. But uh. like, it's R2 here, so top of strong is a good spot for him. Okay, uh, Hayley. So Haley here personally, uh, on paper itself, Haley seems very good because Haley can disable the enemy equipment. But on combat tech, on actual test test itself, I don't think Haley is that strong because I don't see the effective in disabling the enemy equipment, especially in rivalry con um, condition, and we are not able to make our own equipment to share, like in beat bout. So I would say Haley is bad in my opinion. Or yeah, have, uh -huh. I can agree. Because uh, <laughs> her best value in rival race is being a defender. <laughs> <laughs> so, like like spare in a Wuyu team, that's all. <laughs> yeah, so like if you're if you don't have like a Liam or a Fushi or something, and you need another defender, 
Ah, <laughs> so you just just a slot in. <laughs> you know what I mean? I see. Yeah, just 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 to make we get more stacks. That's yeah, really I see. Really I see. Yeah, okay, I get your point. You use uh, your rubber rooms. Okay, uh, I, I'd say bad. <laughs> yeah, I think bad is not even niche. It's just like bad. <laughs> okay, uh, Sienna. So ever since Sienna get her buff, with especially the speed leader buff, which is very important, especially we in most of the time knockout like you, you need five team and you have one additional speed leader buff that is actually useful. It's very epic and. Um, her DVD can dispel, she can stun, clear AP. Uh, I use her in knockout as my sub team, not not the main team, but as a sub team because we need five team, right? I use her at beat bout. I also use her and GBG because the speed leader buff is universal. So even though her rival isn't fast, but the leader buff itself just make her value very very high. So I would say is around strong, not until like meta tier. In for me, but I would say it's strong because he's a very good second team or a very flexible unit as a leader. How yeah, do you think about it? I can agree. Yeah, she's got speed leader. She gives speed attack up. Uh, she stuns AP clears. There's a lot to her kit, but because her rival runes are a bit slow, and because there's other units that do similar things like tier. Without the buffs, mm -hmm, I'd gotcha. say strong, strong works works well for her. Um, Raven. So, uh, I do, I don't really use Raven a lot now, but I do see other players still use Raven as a cliff, uh, cliff team. But personally, for me, I didn't use Raven now because I feel like I'm not able, able uh, to cliff most of the other opponent I have now. But maybe like other player who have a lower tier, they actually still use Raven. But in my opinion. My Raven is low resos, and even though it's high divinity, but I would say Raven is around decent to strong. It's just because my Raven is not able to cleave the enemy team. In my opinion, I would say Raven is around decent to strong for my point. But how do you think? I I know you use a lot of Raven, right? Uh, the Raven before the Wii meta was very very strong, where she could get multiple nukes off. Uh -huh. That first turn that you're using, but now that Wii U exists, she's just giving Wii U more stacks. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Just tickling. <laughs> and them. even even without even without Wii U there, if they have Suja R6, your Raven is just dead. Mm. So it's very it's very hard to uh, to justify using her. So which tier uh, do you I'd think? I'd say Raven... maybe mm -hmm. she's she's similar to Leora. She's nice. straight damage. Oh, that, until that situation. I'd say she's similar, but she's stronger. So I'd say maybe decent is a good spot for her. Ah, okay, okay. So decent. Yeah, yeah I, I, it's like she's the queen of Cleave, but Cleave is not really a solution for the current meta. Um, yeah. Archibald. It's just not enough sustain in a clean team. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it's... you can't one shot, then you're doomed. <laughs> Uh, Archibald, uh, Archibald, I I use him uh, in a Jinchu Mavis team just because to help uh, Mavis to suck up some damage and the debuff to apply is still very good. So I do use him very often in knockout and beat bout not not too much, but I it's still one of a good unit. Uh, RTA I think not that good because the, once they ban Mavis, then then Archibald is basically useless now. So I would rate Archibald at decent to strong, but what do you think about it? Uh, I could put him in decent. I, I personally don't even have him yet, so oh. I can't really say too much about it. But, like he works quite well in maybe your KO dispatch team with uh, Jinchu. Yeah. Something like and Mavis, something like that. Um, but outside of that, you can't really. Anywhere else where you can use him, hmm. so I'd say decent's a good spot since sure. KO is quite a high uh, priority. Then uh, next one is Chu Yao. So Chu Yao, I think we'll straight up, straight into the meta because of what he is able to do, like um, dispel, AOE dispel, and also the leader buff, and also not to mention his rival rune is one of the fastest in the game. And even in point war, when you self build your team, you can build him with Tyrant set, which is a very annoying. Um, Asper and also in RTA, so I would say straight away meta. Yeah, um, with how he just enables your teams, uh, 
makes your P your your DPS just like sometimes unkillable in terms of like Jinshu or, or Dujue. Yeah, he's just very strong, especially with the speed lead, his uh, speed in rival runes, everything like that. It just makes him very strong. Okay, uh, Liam. So I don't really use Liam that frequently, but I do see some player use Liam. Um, pair with Wu Yu because Liam is a defender and also kind of like able to buff their Suja in the team but in my opinion I would say Liam is around strong or uh, I think I would rate Liam in strong in my opinion because this is a R2 Liam but how do you think about Liam? Do you, do you use Liam that often? Yeah, um, Liam a lot of the time is in my Wu Yu team especially if I'm using Momo in my uh, Wu Yu team Mm -hmm. Because it helps Momo get her to 10 stacks. He's also another defender. Um, he also does somewhat decent damage if you have his divs as well. So I can I, I can agree with him being in strong. Okay, Embla. So Embla in current PvP situation is mostly shine with like Fushi Embla combo, all those stuff. And especially you need Fushi there to enable Embla to for her full potential of not dying. But since this was, we are talking about R2 and then um, R RTA you can ban Fushi instantly and Embla just became used just alone and she'll just die. Um, point War, I, I do see some combo like in Knockout, Beat Bout, Triple Threats and Point War even though they're not R6, even though it's R2 is still already usable. I would say Embla is around, I would say it's strong just because in RTA she's not able to use but the, most of the other content She's usable, but need to be with Fushi. But does that mean I have to put a niche, or do you think I have to put that strong? Because she needs Fushi to enable her. Yeah, it's one of those special cases where you need another unit, but then that unit's also not good if it's not R6 with her. It's it's very weird spot for her because sometimes you can use her. Like, Acne still to this day uses her in is beat bad attacks I think it's <laughs> it's, it's kind of uh, she's strong but is quite niche at the same time I guess say so put her in decent it's good spot oh decent mm, okay then um, Gabriel so Gabriel here without the R6 effect it's just R2 I don't know is it that good but I know that the Divinate will make her have immunity so she and her rivalry is pretty fast, so she can block Tolan's S3 in a way. But other than that, I don't really see a very good usage of other than blocking the Tolan's S3. So I would say Gabriel will be a decent for me. But I do say some other player will say Gabriel is a very strong in rivalry. So how do you think about it? Yeah, she's actually tied with for first in terms of the pure speed with Unis. Um, but the thing is, without her divs, she's hard to use, but she gives a lot of buffs and stuff still. Um, decent is, I think, is a good spot for her. Um, Brewster. So, Brewster R2 is not bad because of the pew pew, but the Brewster here, I don't really use a lot in Knockout. Uh, because most of the current meta Asper are able to counter what Brewster is able to do. Um, beat Bout as well, not really that often, but I do use Brewster in triple tracks when I use like around 4 to 5 team already. I really need to form a team, and when I'm able to pick some other team that doesn't have maybe, doesn't have like Anna, doesn't have like Wuyu, after filtering a lot of Asper, then I'll use Brewster as a main DPS and can able to kill them very easily. So I would say Brewster is kind of niche, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, I'm only using Brewster in KO for the heat because mine's R6, D6. Uh. <laughs> but like, at R2, he's not going to be doing much. Um, and I agree, it's, it's only when you're like at the bottom of the barrel, and extra DPS in your GVG, your triple threat stuff. So niche is a good spot. All right. Okay, um, TA, I think even though TA is no longer like the speed meta now in PvP, but TA as a speed leader, the AP swapping, AP um, AP down, and in current high tier PvP, a lot of 
player is starting to use TA team to actually counter Wu Yu team is pretty interesting, which makes me feel like TA is actually able to go up to meta. So it's either strong to meta there, but which part do you think TA should land on? Um, I'm for the people using TA in the Wu Yu teams to counter other Wu Yu teams that are using her at R6. Ah. But um, I think at R2, Still pretty good, maybe like the top of strong end of meta kind of thing. Somewhere here, right? Okay, yeah. um, Lian. So even Lian without R6 effect here, we're just talking about R2. I do still think that Lian uh, is a very important part in the team because as long as your Lian able to take one action, that it might actually turn the whole table because of a shield, a revive kit. So I will rate Lian around strong to meta. I don't know is it worth to until meta because it's not R6 but at least R2 here will enable Lian to be used in most of the PvP content. Uh yeah, so which which tier should Lian go for? It's like is it until like until meta if just R2? So, uh Lian R2 I'd say strong is a good spot for her. Alright. Uh, Elaine, R2. Elaine as a stealth expert and a sleep expert is a very good expert to fight with Anna on your own manual situation. So I would say Elaine is more of a RTA expert in a way if you really really want to use her. But other than that, I don't really see a usage of Elaine even though in triple threat as well. So I would say Elaine is either at bat or either at niche. Um, she's similar to Brewster in a way where she can still do somewhat decent damage but She's also very good against Anna. But if you're not manually, it's very hard to use. But Brewster doesn't need manual. If though. you have her invested already, that's in niche. Ah, oh, that's true. Uh, there's better Anna counters out there. <laughs> so well bad. bad. Okay. Uh, yeah. Clara. So Clara. Um, after so many patches since the beginning of the game until now, I would still say Clara is a very um, decent and very solid expert in PvP content because of the AP push, the clans, the immunity the heals, all those things, so I would still put Clara around decent to strong in PvP content because like when, uh, like in triple threats, when you really use up all the AP pusher and you really want to find a very strong sustained expert or very good AP pusher, Clara is still one of the best choice you are able to pick up. So for me, I would say Clara is around decent to strong, somewhere there. I'd put her in uh, decent because uh, just recently with Amir, if she AP pushes at the start, she gives shield to her ally so i mean it kind of counters that straight away i'd say decent's a good spot for her ah because of the shields and of the army i see okay um valeria and valeria this is only r2 um valeria rival rune isn't that amazing and because of that the rivalry limits her performance in b-bar and knockout already and then um triple threats Valera will not be one of my DPS choices and Valeria I don't think is that good in RT as well when it's low rezo so for me I'll put it at bad. Yeah, I can agree with that. It's very hard to use Valeria in PvP. Okay. Um Ahmed. So Ahmed here for me I didn't level up his rival rune, so I'm just using his um, rival rune with level 12. I still I but even that even it's just at rival rune level 12, it's still make doing a very good job as doing heals uh making the disease wear off which is like most of the icky situation now so i was but it's not like until that good so for me i'll put Ahmed around niche to decent still a very solid healer when you are looking for a strong healer slot in your team especially in triple threats and knockout mm, i agree um uh, he's very kind of one-dimensional though so he's doing only heals and some minor speed and attack buffs um he doesn't do stuff like prevent death and stuff like that so it's kind of hard to use him in higher level pvp uh so i'd agree with the niche niche okay all right jin chiu so jin chiu even though without r6 i would say jin chiu is still in a meta tier because jin chiu is one of the few experts we have true damage so it's one of the count main counter to wu yu team and uh with r2 already is able to build with like jin chiu maybe's combo that's very toxic so for me i'll put jin chiu in meta even though it's not r6 yeah i agree um jin chiu mavis is still getting used everywhere especially with Iki. Yeah. So I'd say meta is Okay, Camille, I think nothing much to talk about Camille even though I like her, so I think we can straight away agree on the bat. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. Alright. Uh, okay, Sally. So Sally here as is like the same position around like Clara. So uh but I would say it's slightly better than Clara in terms of, of like healing, in terms of damage reduction, cleansing, HP dis redistribution. So for me I would say it's the same rank around with Lian, in my opinion, so I'll rate it as strong. Yeah. Uh once she gets her S3 off, it's very powerful. You get that damage mitigation. It's it's really, really good. So I'd I'd agree with that spot. Okay, um, Yun Chuan. Uh, Yun Chuan here, I would say is instantly bad. Is even though she he have multi hit, like speed up all those stuff. But in terms of damage, we're from rival rune. In terms of your usage in point war as well, RTA, I would just say he's he's bad. Yeah, he doesn't do enough damage because a lot of the time he can't even get his debuff off. So it's it's very hard to use. Him. It's just bad. Um. Abigail, so after since the Abigail changes with the Inferno reset um, CD thing with the AP, with the buffs of the changes, um, I don't really see too much of action in Abigail for now in Knockout and Point, um, Knockout and Beatbound. But in like triple threats, is a good position. Point what is a good position. RTA, I'm not sure yet, but I do feel like Abigail have the potential in RTA. So, which means it's other than rival rune content, Abigail, I, I see the uh, Abigail's potential. So for me, I'll, I'm thinking about around decent to strong because it's just other than rival rune's condition. So, which part do you think Abigail will land on? Yeah, I can see strong being a good spot for her. Oh. Um, there's still some niche use. Uh, stuff like pairing her with like Sudra, Mavis, just to kind of get more damage out. Uh, outside of that, it's quite limited. So strong is good because of how many buffs you get. Oh, I'm not to mention the Chloe combo. <laughs> Abigail is one of the main unit. Okay, yeah. uh, Javid. Uh, I do see play player at lower tier that likes Javid use in point war is dealing massive amount of damage. But if we are going talking about like when you go up to the tier with JV does have multi hit JV can't kill Wu Yu all those stuff I would say JV is around niche to bad it's niche is because maybe as an AoE damage for GVG as your like 7 to 10 team <laughs> that you're really out of choices JV might be a good option but other than that not really uh, use so for me I would say it's either niche to bad situation yeah I can agree with that yeah so do you think it's like niche or bad for JV? Um, I think it's niche because he still does some damage. Mm. Uh, yeah. Okay, Farah. So Farah here as a speed counter, not really used in beat bout in my opinion, but because beat bout is like Wu Yu team, then the next one will be like maybe Jin Xiu team, which Farah can't really shine. But Farah can be shine when you enemy using like TA team uh, in triple threats or in knockout as your third to fourth team and RTA I'm not sure with that part point one I'm not sure as well but I do see a usage for triple threat knockout with this to only these two conditions I would say Farah is decent but if you have any options on Farah on RTA and point one then maybe I can we can consider Farah too strong so how do you think about Farah? Uh, I think a decent is a good spot for her she still does okay control freezing the enemy. She does actually decent damage as well. So I'd say decent is a good spot. Okay. Um, Intisa. So Intisa is a bit weird, which is... Uh, it will be good in RTA for some single target damage and also because of multi-hit from Intisa. Then rival rune condition, I don't really see a uh, usage for her. So for me, I will rate it at niche just because play, some player use uh, um, Intisa in RTA. Yeah, um, niche is good spot. Okay. Uh, Matteo. Uh, Matteo as a PvE as per, I would say Matteo is at a bad position in PvP. Some player use Matteo to one punch Anna, but that's in RTA in manual, right? So maybe bad or maybe niche. What do you think? Um, It's just so many better units. And if you're forced to manual, it's Kind of that alone puts him down one. Uh, I'd say bad. Um, Ophelia, I think nothing too much to say about her, right? Like can't really do anything in PvP. No damage, no multi hit, not enough any for, for most of the cases. So bad. Yeah. All right. 
Okay, Phantom Sister. So the moment Phantom Sister have her own R2 effect, then she unlocks the revive. And with the new Phantom Sister changes, you can have revive, uh, AOE dispel, invincibility, AP down. A lot of things in Phantom Sister in her kit now as a healer, as an AP down, as a reviver. Uh, I would say Phantom Sister is around strong to meta now, but I have no idea like is it until meta situation now if for R2 Phantom Sister. Yeah. I feel like it's a bit too early to put her all the way in meta. Uh, it's similar to Abigail where it's, these new buffs are uh, still kind of in the gray zone, haven't tested it enough. But do you think found a team she has a potential really to be in meta? Good, yeah, similar to like Abigail. Ah. It's, it's very good potential for meta with the right teams. Okay. Uh, Momo, I think Momo we can straight up agree is meta just because of her true damage kit, multi hit, as per kit. Um, and R zero is already workable for most of the every single PvP content here, but she's a limited championship expert, so I would say it's meta. Yeah, I can agree meta. She counters Wu. Uh, if you get enough stacks on her, uh, she counters most, most, pretty much everything. Pretty much every single she'll expert in the game, right? <laughs> yeah, because once she gets to ten stacks, she'll be doing a lot of damage. I think. She resists a lot of the debuffs as well. It's hard to kill it. Yeah. Because you're using her with Chuya a lot too. True, true. Very, very annoying combo. Um, Ashley. Yeah. I think Ashley fallen off very long time ago as a buffer and also as a DPS and also to counter speed comp. So I would say Ashley is. Um, do you even use Ashley in triple threats now? I'm not sure about that part. For me, I would say Ashley is bad to niche so i'm not sure with, with that part yeah I, I put her in bad not even niche. Um, she just doesn't do enough yeah she just doesn't do enough nowadays mm. all right okay yamato so yamato as a defender as uh yeah just pure defender as a buffer is good to have a slot in wheel team but without r6 effect is because we're considering him only R2, is it really worth to put into Wheel Team? I'm not sure about that part. So, if with that said, I would say Yamato is around niche to bad. Which 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 position do you think Yamato should be with just R2? Um, I think niche is a bit is a good spot because he's better than Haley in the Wheel Team because ah. he gives a defense up, a speed up. Um, so basically, he's just a better Haley. Better Haley. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the way you come, yeah. Alright. Uh, next one is Ethan. So Ethan we can consider R2 here. So Ethan will be your speed meta, even though she don't really do too much thing in her in his kit. But just because when you want to really fight in speed comp, you just bring out Ethan, then basically kinda you are able to win in speed, especially in rival run, everyone's speed is the same. Having an Ethan or not will straight away affect the whole speed meta in terms of beat bout second team, knockout, and also in triple threats. Rati, I'm not sure people are still gonna use him a lot or not, but just for that part, I would say Ethan is still in the meta just because he's the one of the most important as per for the speed comp. Or do you think he should be in strong? Uh, you're gonna use him a lot in like KO match. Uh, beep out if you're a bit of a lower rank. You, you might use him in tier one or tier two. Uh, he, he's he's just a very good support unit. I'd say uh, since you're using him everywhere, I put him in better. Mm. Not not because he's strong. Just because of <laughs> you can provide the speed, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, Fushi. So the interesting part about Fushi is like some player feels like Fushi is weak. Some player feels like Fushi is strong because Fushi have multi hit can actually um, kill Anna, can en enable Embla in the comm, like Fushi Embla, Cleave Team comm, even though without R6. Uh, so the thing is, we are considering just R2. So I feel like R2 have the potential in RTA because it's your own equipment. You can manually to, to pick what Esper you can fight. Uh, with low rezzo, I think I still think that you are able to use in knockout and beat bow for M to enable Embla in the combo. With even though with low rezzo, so I would say it's around not until meta because lower rezzo. If if R6, I would say it's meta, or else I would say Fushi and R2 is strong or decent. Um. I'd personally put him at decent at R2. Uh, with some divs, 
he can do stuff. He can still do stuff like one-shotting Anno in RTA. Uh, if you're manualing Point War, he can one-shot Anno there. Uh, he helps a lot uh, to enable Embla, of course, even below because the S1 interaction still works. Um, so, so strong. I mean, decent. Sorry, is a good spot for him. Do you think he's like really need an R6 to be like jump up to strong to meta tier? Uh, at R6, I'd honestly put him at like top of strong because he allows you to have that extra um, KO team, uh -huh, uh -huh. which is very strong. Uh, the Fushi Embla with Tolin is very strong in, in KO. Um, he can slot into uh, your Wuyu teams at R6 as well. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit bit of a toss up with that at R6. Yeah. Depends on where you're using it. True. Um, Gaius. So, Gaius, I feel like he has been fallen off from the PP meta because the, the turn that he had to take to become the Thunder God uh, and we are just talking about R2 so the Thunder Strike isn't that enough and then no multi-hit unless it's only left the last one as per standing even though she, he have the potential to kill Anna but with only left Anna so I feel like Gaius isn't really used in most of the content now even though in triple threats as well I would say it's niche maybe as a he is a better DPS so, but because since Javid is at niche, I think he's slightly better than Javid in a way. So I would say guys in a niche. Yeah, uh, uh, guys, uh, Javid, Leora, they're all just basic DPS testers. The basic DPS testers. But they testers. don't do enough. To yeah. Where they can be higher. Yeah. Okay, um, Tricky. So in my opinion, Tricky now I have a new point of view about him. I, do, I feel like he's in the meta tier just because of his passive like really synergized with a lot of the new Esper recently that came out let's say Chu Yao combo with Tricky let's say um, Hilda combo with Tricky the usual one and then Tricky can dispel the mist read up everything it's a very good pair with Chu Yao and also a very good thing with Amir as well and also able to counter Amir in a way because Amir has self built dispel in his own kit so I feel like the value of Tricky actually went up a lot just that you, as long as you don't meet um, Wuyu team, um, then most of the other situation, Tricky will come in a very good position. So for me, I'll rate at meta, but how do you think about Tricky? Yeah, um, thing is, Wuyu team is literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it's it's kind of hard to use him in PvP, especially in like uh, maybe your beep out team one. Uh, he can maybe work in your T2 you're specifically putting him there against Amir or something. Uh huh. So it's very like pick or choose kind of like when you're using Amir. So I'd say strong is a good spot for him. Okay, strong. No, so not until like meta situation, but yeah, as a very strong team, two team. Okay, um, yeah. Liling, I'll say, is straight up bad. Like as a DPS, not enough DPS. As an AP still from the S3, not as consistent as other controllers. So I would say it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh Oli. So Oli as a speed leader and sometimes I see Oli combo with like let's say Oli plus Jin Chiu plus Mavis just to protect Mavis more. But the fact that Oli's rival rune isn't that fast and he can be actually a CD up to not ca cast his passive. So I'm not sure if I should put Oli in decent or niche tier, but he have a speed leader though. Sometimes you just put Oli just for the speed lead. So what do you think about Oli? Do you use him a lot in triple threats? Um, triple threat is obviously pretty strong because of his speed lead. Okay. Um, you might see him sometimes in KO, uh, stuff like that. If you don't have all the speed leads that you need, stuff like that. He's still used, but not in higher level. I'd say maybe niche is a good spot for him. Niche, okay. Okay, um, Tang Xuan. So this Tang Xuan here is R2, which already unlocks his RNG splash damage. Uh, most of the cases, I don't really see a use in Tang Xuan, but I do see some clips about player using Tang Xuan to keep triggering the bong RNG with the Avatara. It seems fun, but I'm not sure is it have to require R6 or not. So in this tier list, it's just R2, and most of the cases in like Knockout, Beat Bout, and triple tracks is not really that efficient so for me i would say it's bad but do you think he's worth the niche uh, he's at r2 
Yeah, R2. It's not really gonna be working. It's not gonna be working at all in uh, PvP. Oh. Uh, I, I think the minimum uh, is probably something like R6, D6 or something. Mm. To get that four, four. Um, the floor splash damage. AOE. Yeah. Yeah, the, the splash damage to four is it. Uh, so yeah, I'd say bad. All right. Okay, the next one is Biotina. So Biotina as an Esper that can actually 100% ignore the defense is act on paper is a very good Wuyu counter. Um, people have been using Biotina in point war, but if we are talking about like in rival rune that is in beat bar and knockout, I don't see a usage for Biotina because of the AI is kind of stupid in a way. So, uh, because you can use in point war so I would say it's niche but other than point war it's not really that good so I would say it's bad so it's somewhere there so how do you think about it about, about Biotina? Yeah the thing with Biotina is you need that R6 to use her PvP because her dispel at the start counts as a hit oh <laughs> is might, it? <laughs> that might fuck you up as well oh like uh, it, it still um, I think it still triggers stuff like Avatar right? ah so, so... <laughs> It's, it's so hard to use. Uh, at R2, you just put her in bad. Okay. Alright, um, next one, Jin Yu Yao. So Jin Yu Yao R2, even though she kind of fell off in a way as a healer spot, but I still feel that the passive dispel is still um, putting in a very good position, especially like you were fighting like Suje, you want to um, passively dispel the buff or transfer the buff away, something like that, especially if he can transfer Slon's debuff away as well. I would say it's around decent to strong, but it's not really that used frequently now in my own case, but do you still use Jin Yu Yao that often? Uh, I don't really see her, I don't really use her that often. But I can see the usage case for her replacing like Sutra or stuff like that where there's a lot of debuffs going on. Especially like Chuyao nowadays, he gives like two or three debuffs straight away. So I'd say niche is a good spot. Oh niche, okay. If you're at niche, she's not quite bad yet. So niche, I'd say it's All right. Um, next one, Yiran. So Yiran has a sleep asper that will actually interrupt his own skill by waking up the sleep. Uh, I would say it's bad, in my opinion, for Yiran. He's not really doing his role too much at R2. Oh. Uh, his control is just not that great. Put him in bad, yeah. Alright, Nama. So Nama R2, I don't really see a usage unless it's like Nama R6. Uh, and most of the cases where they use Nama is either you get countered by Jin Chiu combo or countered by Amir or countered by Wu Yu, all those stuff. So I would say Nama is bad. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, he's just not doing enough at R2. Okay. Um, next one is Changji. So Changji already unlocks his um, HP swapping, which makes him what he can. F um, at least use in the PvP content now. I don't really use Changji that much in my own case, so I don't have too much opinion about Changji. I do see some players use Changji, still using Changji as an Exodia team or in a um, Wuyu team, but I'm not sure how effective is Changji in, in the current PvP. So, do you use Changji that often? Uh, no, not really. Um, I see him sometimes in PvP, but Unless he's like R6, where he's, he's still doing quite a lot of damage there, but R2, he's just not doing a lot outside of maybe being that defender slot in Wii teams. So you think which tier should Changji be in? Um, he's not quite bad, so just put him in niche. Alright. Okay, Nora I think is can instantly go to bad, it's just because she doesn't do like anything in the pvp content yeah okay um donna so donna even though it's just r2 not r6 i feel like donna is also a very good position to combo with wuyu team even though it's not r6 because the maximum is r2 uh, uh bad. but bad like <laughs> like not, not not even a niche the thing is right uh-huh this is 
He's, he's kind of an exception to the R2 because he's completely free to play. Uh -huh. So I think you can consider him R6 here. And but R6 it would take time to get Donna's currency. Yeah, but uh, if you're playing consistently, uh, it won't take that long. I, I personally think he's completely free to play. So, so you, you want to consider, consider him, him as R6, R6 not R2? Yeah, because he's completely free to play. So uh, him being R6 here is not a stretch. I'd okay. put him in the meta. All right, but maybe like a, an asterisk on it or something. Yeah. So if if Donner is R six, he he is in meta. But if Donner is not in R six, then he is not in the meta. Right. Yeah. He yeah. he needs that instant A W pop. Yeah. To, he uh, needs the bong instantly. Be... All right. Um. Next one, Lucas. Uh. As an AP down, as an AP absorb Asper. Um, not really that effective, but I use Lucas a lot in knockout and beat bout surprisingly and triple track as well Just because his rivalry is actually pretty fast that is actually faster like TA and all those stuff So I can usually use like a speed, com uh, speed leader Then I put in Lucas and Lucas usually takes the action first So I would say Lucas is strong just because his rivalry is faster Yeah, he's, he's actually quite fast and his control is decent as well uh, I'd put him in the strong as well. Alright. Um, Yuhime here, even though Yuhime have a speed lead, I don't use her at all, like any kind of PvP content, even though she provides a speed lead for me. So I would say I'll put Yuhime at bad tier, but do you do you find her speed lead that useful? Um, I feel like if you have a speed lead, you kind of need one more redeeming factor. So like Oli has his prevent death but Yuhime doesn't really provide much other than disease and defense down which a lot of the current meta already gives mm -hmm. so <laughs> it, it's hard to justify using her at all I just put her in bed okay um Zora AoE damage dealer I think uh is a worse Gaia so if Gaia is already a niche I would say Nora is a bad yeah, um she's AoE DPS but Where's the DPS? <laughs> <laughs> She's an AOE DPS, but where's the DPS? So true. Alright, uh, Fatima. I think it's the same situation as at Nora. Uh, sorry, Zora. It's like, uh, at R2, because we're not talking about R6, at R2, you want stats, not enough stats. You want DPS, not enough DPS. And also very rely on enemy's um, condition because you want enemy to get buff to trigger her AoE and the AoE doesn't really deal too much of damage. So I don't really see a usage for Fatima R2. I see some R6 but in R2 I don't really think so. So for me I would say it's niche to bad. Somewhere there. Yeah, I'd put it in the same as Zora. Okay. Um, Genie. So Genie R2 here is already very good. Uh, which enable her to start um, being in PvP content, can able to kill Anna. Um, Ginny in PvP point war is gonna be good, in RTA is gonna be good, but in knockout beat bar triple chest, just because of her rivalry is not ocean wave, it kinda makes her not that strong. So I would say um, it's either niche to decent at R2 Ginny. Yeah, um, since Fushimi does a lot of the same stuff, like countering add-on and all that, uh, I'd say decent is a good spot. Okay. Uh, Fumisuki. So, personally, I don't have Fumisuki at all. I don't use her at all because I don't have her, but I also don't see people use Fumisuki that frequent. So, but I do hear people say Fumisuki is good though. So, should we put... So, what is your opinion about her? I don't think she's good. Um, I haven't experienced her either. Even though I have her, I haven't used her at all. Um, it's just hard to slot her in when you just have, uh, you most likely have a lot better espers in your box. I say bad because you're never using it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Iliad. Okay, Iliad here as a asper that is on paper very good and I feel like he will be good in RTA because RTA is just for asper and Iliad can um, CD up to Asper, but it's uh, have a chance to actually get resist. Then other than RTA, not really have a good position for him. 
But if your opinion on uh, Elliot is not good in RTA, then I'll say it's bad. Or else I'll put him in niche. Yeah, I still think he does quite well in RTA. Uh, even last season, I remember he completely shut out um, some people sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, next one is Ife. So Ife here, I think he even though after the buff, Ife is mostly more for PVE conditions. So I would say Ife is at bat. I, I don't agree. Um, All right. She just doesn't do a lot. Um, next one, Luis. I uh, Luis. I think nothing too much to say. I was just straight away put it in bat. Yeah. Yeah. Um, height. So height here is like fell off for sure, but. It's still a very good option for some knockout team or some triple threats team like when you just you truck out of option and you want to use height to try to solo 1v5 enemy after putting like height but four other um, folder so if just because of that i would say height is niche but what do you think about it yeah i think that's really the only use i can see for him so uh, i'd agree all right Okay, now we're going for the Shimmer part. So, Shimmer here, the first one is going to be Jiang Chuli. So, Jiang Chuli R2 is already able to make him um, limit the revive Asper. So, he will limit the um, Asper, like, let's say, uh, Phantom Sister, all of stuff, like Cecilia and, as well. And Jiang Chuli, uh, if you're lucky enough, Jiang Chuli, uh, when he go into demon mode and he jump on some of the enemy, actually a able to kill Wu Yu as well. And it's a very RNG condi condition in knockout team as well. So I would say Jiang Juli R2 is at meta or strong. This around this reach. But how do you think about Jiang Juli's? Yeah, um, I'd say outside of the Wii U team, he's a very good contender in that T2. Um, he does a lot of damage. Uh, he's divinant. Um, can outright stop whole teams if they don't have anti-control. Mm -hmm. um, he's he's just a very strong overall uh, as far. So, so yeah, I, I can agree with Meta. Meta, okay. I can agree with Meta. Uh, Iki, I think nothing too much to say about Iki. Straight up to Meta, like Iki is basically using everywhere other than Wu Yu or Iki. Iki can even pair with Wu Yu as well. Do you think meta strong? Yeah, uh, meta. <laughs> easily meta. <laughs> Definitely meta, right? Okay, yeah. um, Cecilia. So even with Cecilia R two, I feel like uh, Cecilia will get outshined by Phantom Sister. Even though when they are like both at R two situation, I feel like Phantom Sister will be more useful than Phantom um Cecilia in terms of R two, unless Cecilia is R six. So, um, in my opinion, I don't really use Cecilia. At any content in PP, maybe maybe in triple threats when I really have to, but I don't really see a usage for Cecilia in my opinion. So I would put her at niche. But do you find any usage for Cecilia? Uh I personally don't even have Cecilia. Oh, uh, but I have seen this <laughs> sometimes in PvP. So <laughs> I guess niche is good spot. Do you think like Cecilia would go up to decent like just because of her revive kit? Uh it can be good, and she also has the 40% health lead, which is also quite solid as well. Okay, um, I, then... I still start. think I still think it's a niche though. Still think it's a niche, like not that bad good as the decent Esper here. Yeah. Okay, um, Anna. Anna R2, I think instantly up to meta, like even though she have a lot of counter now, but she's still doing a very good performance in most of the team just because she's very flexible. Um, and very strong. Yeah, uh, and R2, she's countering so much. She's doing a lot of damage. And she also enables some teams, especially like Iki. If she's alive, Iki can't die. Yeah. Because <laughs> he can't get targeted or something like that. So, uh, Meta is very obviously a good spot for her. Okay, the next one is Patros, which is the current new Esper. Um, it's a bit awkward position. It's like we thought that he will be the Wu Yu counter, which he isn't. 
but I'm also glad he's not a wheel counter in a way because we don't want to change the meta so frequently. So um, R2 Petros, I'm not really sure how he performed in, in R2, but at least I have R0 from what I'm tested in R0. It's very very hard to use him because like DPS wise he doesn't really have that much unless the enemy left like a few HP and like a finishing um, skill. Very good to counter against Mavis comp like Brain Dead. Like if you see Iki plus Jinshu Mavis in one comp, you put in Petros, basically it's kind of a free win for me. So I'm not sure where should I put Petros in. Like I feel like it's niche but it's not really that niche. I feel like strong but it's not really that strong. It's not really that, like, is it decent? Yeah, but how do you, how do you think about Petros' performance? Um, I've heard from some people that play RTA a lot, he's very good there. Oh. Um, yeah, and obviously he counters the, that Jinchu and Mavis comps. Uh, it's hard to say a lot because almost no one really summoned for Petros. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot to see in PvP. So uh, at this point, I think you can put him in decent. Decent, but, but he's very maybe strong in the RTA. future. Maybe in the future, yeah. Maybe in the future we can see him go higher. Yeah, he has a potential. Just that I feel like he's something lacking there, that doesn't really make him shine that much. But he's really doing a very good job fighting. Maybe his combo. This is for sure. Then Tavern. Yeah. Tavern R2 as a DPS expert because of the AI is kind of stupid in a way. It fell off after since Mavis meta came out, so it's not really it's not able to counter Wu Yu when in auto mode. But in point war as a mano, you can you can do it. Um, so I would say Tavern is good at point war and RTA. RT, uh, then but in rivalry system, not really that much in my opinion. But so I I do see Tavern in um, triple threats. So since Tavo can cover three position, I would say Tavo is at decent range for me. Yeah, um, I've heard some people manual in point war uh, and use him to counter warrior teams. <laughs> so it's, it's it's I think decent. Yeah, it's a good spot. Okay, Shenpin still as a uh, strongest buffer in the game. Uh, now, uh, especially now we have the Chloe combo with Champion that I exposed, which is uh, actually exists in the game very long already. And so, which means Champion is good in point war, uh, in knockout and beat bout, Champion is pretty fast. And if you really want to play a cleave team, so let's say you want to play uh, Raven plus Champion, I think Champion is a very, very important role if you really want to play a cleave team. So, I'm not sure if Champion should go up to like meta as a buffer or strong as an overall. So what do you think about Shenpin? Um, I feel like she's in a similar spot to function, but uh -huh. because she doesn't AP push like he does, it's a little hard to use her because all of her skills hit the enemy, so you can't use her against Wuyu. Uh, it's maybe in strong, I, I think strong is a good spot. Okay. Um, Everett, so in Everett here, should you consider him as R2 or R6? Um, I'd say R6. Alright. So in you get him for free. Yeah, so in if we're considering Everett at R6, I would say Everett is instantly at meta now, even though Everett cannot counter Wu Yu, but he has the potential to pot um, make Wu Yu team even better. And he, other than Wu Yu team, he can fit in any single team that as long as a shimmer that, let's say you want to pair him with Anna, pair him with Iki, or pair him with Jiang Juli, is a very very strong as well after since his buff. So I would say it's a meta tier just because what he's able to provide to the shimmer as well. And in the future, the more shimmer as well came out, the better he is. So for me, it's meta. Um, meta is a good spot for him because that first effect on, uh, like, blocking that first effect on everything, mm -hmm. it, 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 you don't, like, a lot of people don't understand how impactful it is. Like, it can outright stop certain debuffs. You can, can stop, stop Suji's like, puppet art spread. Yeah, stuff like that. It's just, 
It's very strong, and I think he's still underestimated right now. Though. Yeah, I think not many but people yeah, have meta, been meta is a good spot. playing him a lot now, but I feel like more people will slowly, slowly find his potential. But yeah, I would say it's meta from what I've tested. Um, Nusi. Personally, I feel like Nusi fell off just because uh, even though she, her kit is very perfect to be honest, like CD up, AP push, AP down, all of stuff is very very perfect. But somehow, because of the like Wuyu meta, maybe it's meta, all this thing makes her very very hard to shine in the current meta. Uh, I'm not sure like how often people is gonna use Nusi now. For me, I would say Nusi is niche to decent, but she she's very very strong. But she can't shine somehow. Yeah, um, Lucy, you can maybe use her in triple threat. Um, and maybe, oh, well, before I used to use her in KO because she gave a lot of heat, but now, now it's very hard to use her in KO. Uh, Beep out, you're not using her. I think maybe point war and triple threat is maybe the only spots you will use her. Yeah, so you think decent or niche? Uh, niche. Niche, okay. Um, Tolan, I think Tolan we can still straight up put to meta just because he's the speed king. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah, just because yeah, especially speed with the um, light light set, um, giving that small AP push at the start of like rival runes. Yeah, the uh, yeah the rival rune like set. That's so rare. <laughs> yeah. Um, will you? Quite easy to. Do Nothing much to say. Up straight up to meta. <laughs> Everywhere, woo you everywhere. Nothing much to say about it. Um, Shima, the last one we're gonna have is Una. So Una's here is like very good AP push, one of the fastest speed in Rival Rune, have immunity in his divinity, but other than that, he doesn't really do that much of thing in terms of knockout and beat bout. But in triple threats, he's the meta because of the. Speed lead 35%, that is the most unique uh, speed leader in GVG. Uh, I don't I don't see a usage in point one RTA. So for me, Unus is very good in GVG, but other than that, it's pretty decent. So I'll say it's niche to decent in my opinion. Say so maybe niche. Um because you might be able to use him in care just for the speed. Because his AP push is so strong. Triple threat is obviously very very good there because of that speed lead. So yeah, niche is a niche is spot there. I see. Uh, yeah, so we are done with the Asper today. We didn't add Slon in because I feel like we have not enough um, tests on Slon yet because most of us not even have Slon one copy or maybe just one copy is not enough to test Slon. So today's tier list, even though it's 3.4.9, we are not adding Slon in because that's not accurate for us to actually judge Slon first, especially Slon is a limited Asper, so we are not judging Slon yet. But for now, this is the PvP tier list based on our opinion. So if you don't agree with certain Asper or certain tier, you can feel free to let us know. And also, I know that you will skip until this part here, so you may, uh, you miss out the analyze. So if you really miss out the analyze and you feel like, oh, why this Asper and this specific tier, highly encourage you actually watch back some of the part that for that specific Asper you want to know before you let us know your comment. But this is the point war. Uh, sorry, this is the PvP. Um, Tier list by my opinion and the opinion from Chony, so it might have a different perspective, right? So you can feel free to share your own thoughts. So anything else you want to say about it, Chony? Uh, any anything I wanted to say, I already said. So, so not thinking much to <laughs> yeah, like cover the rest, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Alright, so hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope this tier list actually helped you guys out with your decision in the PvP content. But keep note, this is only for Rezo 0 to 2. If you are looking for Rezo 6 one, that will be the another tier list. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye. Bye bye. Special thanks for the direct support on the YouTube membership. So for the benefactor of our tier, which is Gen MP, Rosas 15, Mokot Regili, the Blue Chalane, Pigeon Roulette, Kemi, thank you so much for the support. And for the supporter and patron of our tier, which is Louis Shenada, Agni, Kut Wilderness, Wang Tamer, Ziggy, Kamaruki, Sunwatts, Rimu, Chani, Von Hexa, Rawson Bessie, Antonio Winterspoon, Marilyn Williams, and Uncle Chad. Thank you so much for the support. And that's not all. Also, special thanks for the direct support on the live stream super chat, the latest plan. So special thanks to 
Pigeon Surulet, Acne, Ziggy, Cold Wilderness, Chani, and Rosa Sweetin. Thank you so much for the support and hope you guys enjoyed the video and see you guys in the next video. Bye bye!